Hi, I am Ravi. I am an author and a developer and in this video I will talk about finding the best analytic unit allocation or AU for your USQL job in Azure Data Lake. In the world of Azure Data Lake, to execute the job faster, you may throw more resources or AUs to your job, but that could result in very inefficient AU usage and could stretch you a little financially. To optimize the AU usage, you could allocate only a few AUs, but then your jobs will be running forever that never seem to complete within the timeline. So have you ever been stuck in this conundrum and it just doesn't seem possible to get the best of both the worlds? If so, this video is for you where I will first look at how the job consumes analytic units and exploring tools provided by Azure to help us optimize job performance that align to your goals. After you watch this video, you will be well placed to find that sweet spot of cost time spectrum and choose the right AU for your use case which will save you lots of money or lots of time according to what you want. So hang on with me for a breezy fascinating journey to get to that magical number. An AU is a unit of compute resource that USQL jobs use to execute their work and they are equivalent to 2 CPU cores and 6 GB of memory. When you submit a new SQL job, the compiler divides the job into individual pieces of work called a vertex. The vertices are then grouped as a super vertex or a stage. Every vertex in a stage is doing the same kind of work with different pieces of the same data and each require one AU to perform its task. Let's assume I submit a job with a parallelism of 4 AUs. When the job starts, 4 AUs will be assigned to 4 vertices and they will start running. Now at the same time, the job accumulates cost, so let's look at cost graph. In data lake, the cost is measured in AU hours, which is the product of time taken to execute the job and the number of AUs allocated. The green line indicates my AU allocation and the area of blue rectangle indicates the cost accumulated till now and note that none of the AUs are idle at this stage. After 4 vertices run successfully, the AUs are released and assigned to the next 4 vertices. Here, the vertices in stage 2 are running even before the stage 1 is complete and this is possible because the vertices have dependencies between them. So a dependent vertex can start running if the vertex on which it depends is complete even if the preceding stage is not done. This process continues with the job executing 4 vertices at a time. Note that as the job progresses towards the end, only one vertex is running at a time due to vertex dependency and we have 3 unused AUs. The very essence of understanding the mechanism of a USQL job is to appreciate the fact that there can be unused AUs and you are in fact paying for the idle resources and this knowledge makes the quest of finding the right AU even more meaningful. On the other hand, to optimize the AU usage, if I submit the same job with one AU, the job gets executed with one vertex at a time. Here, you do not have any idle AUs, but notice how long this job takes. Let's explore tools in Azure to help us answer what do I optimize, for time, or for cost, or is there a sweet spot? I have a new SQL script that reads the data from monthly files, apply some aggregation and outputs that to a file in data lake store. To begin with, I will set the AUs to 5 and submit the job. Once your job is successful, you get a job graph that summarizes the job. This job has two stages and each placard represents a stage. 
Data Lake provides a cool feature called AU Analysis, which displays a graph that plots time and AUs allocated. And here is the statistics for the actual job. The dotted line indicates allocation and the solid line indicates usage. The graph shows efficient AU usage up to 1 minute, but after that it becomes very inefficient. Data Lake provides a configuration called Balanced. It suggests me to increase the AUs to 8 so that I get the best value for money. And FAST gives me a configuration for the lowest runtime possible without burning the pocket too much. If you need even better performance, drag the AU value to higher than the FAST recommended value of 15 which will run the job in even lesser time. And any job will not be able to take advantage of the additional AUs you throw at them due to limits in parallelization and there will be a point which is 25 for this job at which you will get the best run time. And beyond 25 you will see no increase in time performance. If you go to the other extreme with 1 AU, there is a very efficient usage but note that it takes more than 5 minutes. Let's deep dive to understand the information from Azure graphically to help us pin down on a magical number for any use case. Let's plot AUs to model and time. If you take a different AUs to model and plot the estimated time and estimated cost, the graphs would look like this, which is typical of all USQL jobs. Let's consider several use cases and see where Azure recommendation fits in. If you always want to incur the least cost for your job, go for one AU. As the orange line indicates, adding more AUs will add to the cost. If you are running some kind of devotees jobs, this is the place to be. Next is the balanced configuration suggested by Data Lake. This configuration is at the inflection point for getting the best performance for additional investments in cost. If you want the best value for money, balanced is your answer as the slope you see is really steep. Next is the fast configuration or the point of diminishing returns. It is the highest AU allocation point beyond which additional input cost would yield less and less returns. If your priority is time, for example a job that needs to be completed in a day, then go for fast as you get a good time performance with a decent return on investment. If FAST doesn't give the time performance you need, then you can allocate even more units. For example, in some industries, time is a very crucial factor. Management needs to have access to the latest data as soon as possible to gain a competitive advantage. If the value of earlier access to data is greater than the cost of additional AUs, then go for this configuration which gives the best time performance but then do realize that you will be spending a lot of money for less and less returns. And beyond 25 AUs, don't ever go into this zone as the resources will be wasted for no increase in performance. So hopefully you do realize that finding the right AU has less to do with just a simple cost time optimization and more to do with introspecting your job or business priorities. Ideal AUs are not always bad as portrayed in the beginning. They can in fact be used to pull through some stages fairly quickly giving you better time performance. So, you should move away from focusing excessively on idle AUs, which is the common mistake and instead asking yourself, what is my priority? Am I willing to pay that little extra for better time performance? Frankly, I feel Microsoft should come up with a dynamic AU allocation that automatically releases the AUs if they are not used by a job. But probably that may be a long time from now and till then the concepts that we learnt in this video should serve you well.